am pitching the first edition today. So a couple weeks ago, I asked everyone, what did we all want to be when we were growing up? And it wasn't a firefighter or a policeman. No, it was none of those things. We all imagined ourselves being superheroes. We all played the game superhero with our friends in our backyard. It's not like we thought it was hard. Just put a cape on, bam, we can fly. It didn't matter if that cape was a blanket or a towel. We thought it was as good as Superman's to us. Because it wasn't laser eyes or super strength that made us strong that way. It was the power of our imagination. Whenever our parents saw us running around playing superhero, they saw us running around with a trash can or some other household item. But in our mind, we saw something like this. <laughs> That's what first session is all about. Not taking out Nazis. It's about <laughs> the inner child inside us, that imagination, and building it into reality. Superhero style. So, first session has to bring nostalgic theme, right? So I'm going to go nostalgic style video games, like a 2D side scroll. Well, combine that with 3D, and what do you get? It's not 2.5D, you get a full 3D side scroller. So, what that is basically, it's a full 3D game with a camera that goes left to right, locked. But you can still navigate through the environment because it's a full 3D game. So, you don't feel locked onto one plane, you don't feel stuck. You get to explore. It's not really a genre that's really touched upon too much in the industry. Um, combat is pretty straightforward. You get sock and bop, just like uh, Streets of Rage, right? Now, superpowers help spice up that little system right there. So speaking of superpowers, that's when you need a superhero, right? So how do you get those? Well, you get them from defeating bosses and taking their own power and adding it onto your own, Mega Man style. Mega Man, Mega Man! <laughs> <laughs> now, you choose one of two powers this time. You get a choice in the representation of equipment. Like, I'm just going to give an example, like Captain America's shield or Thor's hammer, and they each have a different power that they represent. So, like, let's say the one on the left here gives you the power to deflect projectiles and sort of right back at the enemy. The other one, you throw a shield right at like a projectile, right? Now, the interesting thing here is that as the game goes along and you collect more powers, you can use them in conjunction with other powers. So, let's say that you chose that. Uh, protective shield power, right? And you also get superhuman speed. You can com combine that to create a charge attack where you're invulnerable for a little bit. But it's taking those two powers and creating them into one combo, right? So players will want to, you know, experiment within the game to see what new things they can do. Which brings up the question, can't I just choose every power, switch them out? Of course you can. There'll be a little hub because in your treehouse, because a treehouse is the most astounding place that I can think of, right? So up there, you got all your equipment on the wall, and you can switch them out as you please, and it acts as a place that can go in between all the conflict action packed levels, which I'll get to in just a minute. Now, the art style very bright, vibrant colors that pop out from the screen, like it's a real comic book. Uh, the highest saturated colors are reminiscent of late 90s comics like Spider Man, which is one of the best movie girl ever, next to whatever you all like, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, Whenever you land a critical hit on an opponent, you can throw in some kind of jazz in there, because that's cool. That's cool feedback. It's a cool kind of critical hit. Um, so the character uh, structures, they have very over-exaggerated bodies. So like, if you're skinny, you are really skinny. If you're big, you're really big. Um, Psychonauts did an excellent take on this, because what they did was that they created characters that have very unique silhouettes, so you can easily tell who each person is. They really stand out from each other. So the focus is really on shapes, not features. Um, so basically, the more cartoony the character is, the better, because that's the tone that first edition goes for. When it's pretty obvious when you look at characters like Captain South America, uh, <laughs> Iron <laughs> Stomach, and Benedict Arnold. Just oh, so you control your own avatar, right? Because we want you to feel like this guy is you, right? Now, we can make it gender specific if you're a boy or a But to go straight, get straight into it, the way that the plot goes is that you're a kid in elementary school, and your best friend is this kid, Spencer. He's a really nerdy kid, but you both really share the same enjoyment you love for comic books. But you find him beaten up at the playground one day, and he tells you that it was Jones, the jock bully that stole his backpack that was full of comic books. And he goes, well, we got to get those things back. What's the big deal? There's comic books. Go ask more. And he goes, no, no, no. These aren't just normal comic books. These are 
first edition comic books. These things are very rare and expensive for a reason. See, if you touch one with your bare hands, you get superpowers. That's why they always did the plastic. Science. <laughs> <laughs> There's a catch, though. There's always a catch. <laughs> if you touch it, that super, that super world, comic book world, invades our own. And that means that all the villains that fuck inside it come out and be chaos. So that means that not only has Jones got got superpowers, but he's unleashed hell on Earth. And you need to stop that. It's good news though. Spencer was able to hold onto one book for you. Captain South America, everyone's favorite superhero from Chip Island. <laughs> so basically, what happens though is as you touch it, that bland real world around us, you start to feel it fade away into this vibrant, colorful comic book world. Your clothes on your back, they turn into a superhero outfit. You feel strong, you feel like you can take on the world, which is important because, like I said before, there's a catch. So once you touch it, Ink and Warriors from those pages come out with that jungle. You gotta fight those guys back too. So this is where this, uh, the game begins. You fight back these Ink and Warriors all the way up <coughs> into the canopies of the Amazon jungle. And then you eventually find the big boss, the chief, and you send them right back up into the comic book. Like so. <laughs> now, as you do this, you raise the comic book high above your head. You start to feel the world around you, this awesome comic book action-packed jungle world, start to fade away. You're not in the Amazon treetops anymore. You're back home in your treehouse. Because when we were kids, that's what we imagined our treehouse was. It was awesome. So, you also realize that that tight suit that you had fades away also. And you have just ordinary household items that represent what you once had. We, the player, we notice this, but our character, he doesn't see that. He still sees himself as an awesome superhero. So this is back when you're in the hub, right, in between all the worlds. So what happens here is that you need to find the bully again. You follow a cookie crumb trail to follow him, and I'll unleash that comic book world once more and rinse and repeat until you evolve into an awesome superhero. So before I said all superheroes have superpowers, right? What else do they have? A superhero always has a super villain with them, right? This is our super villain, the bully, your rival. Rival. Who here has played Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow? Me. Okay, <laughs> most of us, almost all of us. Uh, for those of you that haven't done already, you won't really be in the dark. For those of you that did play Pokemon, when I said rival, you all thought this is a douchebag, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that interesting? If one here gave a yeah, not the yeah, I said yeah. I hated him. <laughs> we all universally hated him. Now, how did Nintendo do that? It's really interesting. I haven't seen a lot of other games do this. Well, it's really simple. You play your weaknesses, even right from the start. Whatever Pokemon that you would choose, which is your partner or your weapon, he would choose whatever you were weak to, whichever that he was strong against. And also, as the game would go along, he would build a balanced team, so generally speaking, Whatever you threw at him, he can throw right back at you and get rid of you. So it's like, oh, okay, here's my Oddish. Oh, cool, check out my Growlithe. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> now, check out the little weapons here also. 26 and 3. Because that's actually pretty important. Basically, he's way stronger than you already. That goes to the next one. Gary was always at least one step ahead of you. Always. Because you knew that you were getting stronger as the game was going along. But you also knew he was getting stronger faster. Yeah! <laughs> Look, I just got all angry and animated over a digital fictional character. That's so cool! Why can't we apply that to our bully? They're so simple. Like, the first characteristic, always being one step ahead. So we never truly defeated Gary in Pokemon, right? Until the very end. Do the same thing here. Every time that you fight the bully, that's the mini boss in between each level, he will basically run away before you finally defeat him. So you build that hatred, you really milk it. Because once you defeat him, in the end, that's the most satisfying thing ever. Now, the second thing is him playing your weaknesses. So you gain two powers as the game goes along, right? Well, the, uh, the older powers that we got won't work alone against him. You need to use your newer ones in order to defeat him, uh, which is a very Miyamoto strategy, because the pattern gets more complicated as the game goes along, right? And Miyamoto was a genius when boss battle patterns, because that's all a boss battle is. It's a puzzle hidden within an enemy with a pattern. So to give an example, this is a classic Miyamoto boss battle. Let's say that our, rhino, that our bully 
got rhino powers, right? He's got thick skin, so he shield attacks and melee attacks won't work against him by itself. But what he does is that he does some kind of charge attack, which is really fast, it knocks you over. So you need to get out of the way. But you just pick up his boots in the, in the level earlier, which allows you to either uh, hyper dash or double jump. Either way, you can avoid that attack. Once you do, he runs right into a wall, gets stuck. It's sort of just whack him over again. And this pattern repeats, but it leaves, open, it leaves an interesting road for you to follow. You can throw in other tactics to spice it up, like an earthquake attack or throwing rocks at you. You get the point. So I'm just going to end it right here to remind all of us that first edition is about us when we were kids and how our imagination built new worlds, how we felt, felt invincible but also really powerful. And I think that's so cool that we have a chance to build that experience into a video game of creating your own imagination and shaping it into reality. Questions? Mm -hmm.